Wrestling is not just about the body slams and knockout punches. There's a whole lot of crazy movement involved. And sometimes, all that action leads to wrestlers accidentally shedding some clothes right there on live TV. And guess what? It happens way more often than you'd imagine. From wardrobe malfunctions to unexpected mishaps, here are WWE wrestlers who lost their clothes on live TV. Getting right into it, we've got when Becky Lynch suffered an embarrassing wardrobe malfunction at the Royal Rumble when her breast popped out on live TV. Yep, her outfit decided to take an unexpected turn on live TV. And well, you know the rest. Becky Lynch is certainly one of the biggest stars in WWE history, but that doesn't mean she's immune to, uh, certain malfunctions. It all went down at Royal Rumble 2019 when she was going against Asuka. Before the match, Asuka and Lynch had never gone head-to-head -head in a televised one-on-one -on -one match, which made their bout pretty exciting. Plus, they really amped up the anticipation by adding some serious storytelling to their rivalry, turning their match into a must-watch event. Two weeks before the Rumble, Lynch and Asuka were in full-on competitive mode, trying to outshine each other. But as luck would have it, the Iconics decided to crash the party. After Lynch took down Peyton Royce in a heated match, Asuka wasn't about to be left out and made Billy Kay tap out with her signature Asuka lock. WWE really nailed it in hyping up Lynch and Asuka as a perfect matchup for the Royal Rumble. It made their match one of the toughest on the entire card to call. Sure, Lynch had that whole superstar vibe going strong, but let's not forget Asuka's reign of terror before her setback against Flair at WrestleMania. But a pretty interesting match wasn't the only thing that happened that night. Nope, Royal Rumble served up more. Things got a bit wild when apparent technical problems killed the feed. Turns out it wasn't their tech acting up, it was Becky Lynch's outfit having a wardrobe malfunction. The brassier area of her attire left her chest exposed and left the WWE production team scrambling to keep the product PG. All this drama went down right in the middle of the opener, with Champa Suka reigning supreme to keep her SmackDown women's title. Just another day in the WWE universe. Moving on, we've got when AJ Styles revealed his ass to the whole world. Well, it wasn't intentional, but it might as well have been. Wrestlers have all sorts of fashion vibes. Some wear cargo shorts, tiny trunks, or even sleek tights. But as AJ Styles found out the hard way at TLC 2016, those stylish tights can bring some unexpected drama. The feud between AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose was gearing up for a grand finale at TLC. Their rivalry has been sizzling hot since day one, starting back at Backlash when Styles snatched the strap with a well-placed kick to Ambrose's groin, followed by his classic Styles Clash finisher. Since then, Ambrose has been on Styles' heels, even recruiting the mysterious James Ellsworth to his cause at WGWE TLC. The match had its highs and lows, but one moment stood out as downright hilarious. As soon as the intros were done, the match exploded. Ambrose was dominating at first, but Styles fought back, attempting to climb the ladder, but Ambrose wasn't having it. The action spilled outside, with Ambrose taking full advantage, even using a garbage can to deck Styles. Back ringside, Styles finally rallied with a dropkick and a clothesline, but Ambrose was relentless, unleashing a chair assault on Styles' face like a man possessed. Just as Dean was about to drop an elbow on poor AJ, who was spread out on the announce table, it became painfully obvious to everyone that Styles was showing off more than he intended. Yep, his tights had a major rip right in the nether region. But did the match stop? Not a chance. Ambrose was quick to seize the opportunity, making a dash for the ladder to grab the belt. Styles wasn't about to let that happen though, as he sent Ambrose crashing throat first into the ropes. But just when Styles thought he had the upper hand, Ambrose had other plans, using the ladder not once, but twice, to take him down. Then it was chair-swinging madness as they both took turns trying to knock each other out of commission. The action didn't let up as Styles and Ambrose traded their signature moves, with Styles landing his picture-perfect dropkick, only for Ambrose to fire back with his trademark clothesline. Outside the ring, it was all Ambrose's game as he laid Styles out on an announce table before setting up a ladder on another. 
Styles pulled off his awe-inspiring moonsault reverse DDT combo on the unforgiving floor. Then, showing no mercy, Styles positioned Ambrose on a table and delivered a jaw-dropping springboard 450 splash. Styles eventually climbed the ladder and snatched the belt, which was a pretty exciting win. But let's be real, the real MVP of the night was Styles' ripped pants. Like a good sport, Styles found it rather humorous. Hey, better to show some cheek in a literal sense than risk losing figuratively, right? Styles may have flashed a bit more than intended, but hey, he walked away with the belt in the end. At least Ambrose had the good sense to wear some sturdy denim, although Shawn Michaels was wearing some pretty sturdy denim when it got caught. In mid-October 2004, WWE's brand new event, Taboo Tuesday, hit the scene. It was a Tuesday PPV with a twist. Fans got to play matchmaker by voting online for the matches, stipulations and opponents they wanted to see in certain bouts. One of the big decisions? Who would face off against the reigning world heavyweight champion? Triple H fans had their say, with the options being Edge, Shawn Michaels and Chris Benoit. It was basically a wrestling democracy in action. Back then, the crowd wasn't feeling Edge's goody-two-shoes routine anymore, and they'd been giving him the cold shoulder for a while. So, the folks in charge decided it was time for a change. They flipped the script and turned his heel. The whole voting gimmick played right into the storyline. When the fans had their say, they chose Shawn Michaels to take on Triple H for the World Championship instead of Edge. That was the Edge's cue to ditch his scheduled tag match with Benoit and crash Shawn Michaels' championship bout, costing him the title in the process. It was like hitting the storytelling jackpot, a perfect blend of fan involvement and organic character development. In the following months, Edge and Shawn Michaels were locked in a brutal feud, with Edge becoming a rated R superstar, a twisted villain who cared more about causing chaos than anything else. He was out to maim and manipulate anyone who crossed his path, with no regard for consequences. Their feud eventually reached its peak, setting the stage for both men to move on to bigger things at WrestleMania 21. Shawn Michaels went on to deliver one of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history against Kurt Angle, while Edge made history by winning the inaugural Money in the Bank ladder match, laying the groundwork for his future world title triumph just months down the road, but even the GOAT has off days. In a 2005 episode of Raw, during the Gold Rush tournament semi-finals, Shawn Michaels was making his... He knelt down and couldn't quite stand up. What exactly happened? Now, the ma they didn't wear their usual flashy ring gear. Rather, they went for their street gear, complete with Shawn Michaels' iconic cowboy boots and jeans, setting the tone for a fight rather than a wrestling match. This didn't go too well. As soon as the bell rang, they skipped the pleasantries, diving straight into a flurry of fists and fury, with Sean quickly grabbing his belt and using it to give Edge a royal thrashing in and out of the ring. But then, out of nowhere, disaster struck. One of Sean's tassels got caught in the entrance ramp, sending him crashing to the floor like a sack of potatoes. Somehow, Edge managed to keep his cool amidst the chaos unfolding before him, although he did eventually lose the game. Next up, we've got Alexa Bliss. A lot of you might be thinking that we're talking about the infamous dressing room scene on Raw, but nope, Alexa Bliss has, in fact, experienced another incident where her shoes apparently failed her. With zero wrestling experience, Alexa Bliss scored a WWE contract in May 2013 and headed to NXT, WWE's developmental territory. Fast forward to the July 24th episode of NXT, which was actually taped on June 20th, and there she was, making her TV debut by giving props to the first ever NXT Women's Champion, Paige. She started her main roster journey on the SmackDown scene in 2016, quickly rising to become a two-time SmackDown Women's Champion, winning that title twice. But she didn't stop there. Bliss moved to the Raw brand in 2017 and totally owned it, becoming a three-time Raw Women's Champion. Her first reign on Raw also made history, marking her as the first woman to win both the Raw and SmackDown women's titles. Partnering up with Nikki Cross, they broke records as the first ever two-time WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, which also landed Bliss the title of the second women's Triple Crown Champion. And the accolades just kept coming. 
In 2018, she dominated both the second women's money in the bank ladder match and the first ever women's elimination chamber match. Bliss was on a roll. On the April 29, 2019 episode of Raw, Alexa Bliss was caught off guard and definitely not dressed to throw down in the ring. Without her trusty boots in sight, the goddess was in no mood for a spontaneous title match when Naomi threw down the challenge. But as luck would have it, the show must go on. Even though Bliss wasn't decked out in her usual ring gear, the match kicked off anyway. Alexa tried to buy some time by leisurely tying her shoelaces, hoping to delay the inevitable. But alas, the action started before she could fully lace up and get in the zone. Talk about being caught off guard in the most unexpected way. Once Alexa finally got her boots on and tied up, she started finding her groove in the match. But her victory dance was short-lived when Naomi unintentionally knocked her boots off during the chaos of the match, leaving them still loose. Bliss found herself in a bind, clearly not prepared for the bout. In a moment of frustration, Alexa barked at the referee, but it was too little, too late. Before she knew it, Naomi capitalized on the opportunity, delivering her rear-view move and sealing the deal. Talk about a sneaky move from Naomi. The loose kicks ended up costing Bliss the match, and afterward, she couldn't help but laugh it off, admitting she needed to remember to lace up her shoes nice and tight from now on. Lesson learned the hard way. But hey, at least it made for one memorable match. Speaking of memorable, WWE fans certainly won't forget when Jake the Snake ripped Rick Rude's tights on live TV. Most of the wardrobe mishaps on this list happened by accident, but Jake, the Snake Roberts, fully intended to give Rick Rude's tights a little extra ventilation. And let's be real, Rick might have had it coming. Now, if you're not familiar with Jake, he's been around the wrestling block, making waves in WWE and strutting his stuff in AEW since 2020. This guy's wrestling career was like a wild roller coaster ride through some of the biggest promotions in the business. He made a splash in the WWE not once, but twice. First rocking the scene from 1986 to 1992, then making a comeback from 1996 to 1997. But there's more. He didn't just stick to the WWE. He threw down in other rings too, like the National Wrestling Alliance in 1983, World Championship Wrestling in 1992, and even took his talents south of the border to Mexico's Asistencia, Asesoría y Administración in 1993 to 1994 and 1997. And let's not forget his run in Extreme Championship Wrestling in 1997 and his appearances in Total Non-Stop Action Wrestling from 2006 to 2008. What really set him apart, though, were those spine-tingling promos, his eerie aura, and his mind games in the ring. Oh, and who could forget his killer move, the DDT, which WWE later crowned the coolest maneuver ever. And let's not even start on his trademark, bringing snakes, especially that unforgettable python, into the ring. He's not afraid to shake things up, even if it means going against the big boss, Vince McMahon. But hey, that's what makes him a legend, right? In 1988, Jake Roberts and Rick Rude were locked in a heated feud, sparked because Rude was making advances towards Jake's wife, Cheryl Hergood. After a match against Tommy Angel, Rude shocked every, admitting it was a spontaneous move during an interview with Café de René. Talk about real-life drama spilling into the ring. Jake Roberts later revealed that he had a chat with Rick Rude before the big show. Jake wasn't having it and straight up told Rude it was totally disrespectful to his wife. But did Rude listen? Nope. He was going to wear them no matter what. So, Jake laid down the law, warning him that if he dared to strut his stuff in those tights, they were getting ripped off. And interestingly, Vince McMahon, the big boss himself, told Jake Roberts to keep his cool and let the show run its course as planned. But Jake, oh, he had other ideas. He was dead set on defending his wife's honor no matter what. McMahon tried his best to talk him out of it, but Jake wasn't budging an inch. When he saw Rude strutting around in those disrespectful tights, it was game over. Because even if he was going against the boss's order, it made for some seriously entertaining TV. Next up is A.G. Lee, who will be remembered not only for her iconic career, but also for a, well, let's just say, a memorable wardrobe moment involving her bra. 
She's hailed by a lot of people as the pioneer of the women's revolution in WWE. With her unmatched in-ring prowess, charisma and mic skills, AJ Lee was the complete package during her prime. Throughout her time on the main roster, she brought some serious excitement into the Divas division, making waves and grabbing attention like no other. Mendez started off her wrestling journey back in 2007, hitting the ropes in New Jersey's indie scene. WWE came knocking in 2009, and after a couple of years of developing her skills in Florida Championship Wrestling, she made her big league debut. But it was in 2012 that she really made her mark, diving into intense storylines with her mentally unstable persona, getting tangled in high-profile relationships, and even taking charge as Raw's general manager for three months. Over the years, she won the Divas Championship three times, matching a record and held on to the title for a whopping 406 days in total. Her stellar performances earned her the Slammy Award for Diva of the Year in 2012 and 2014, and fans couldn't get enough, voting her Woman of the Year from 2012 to 2014 in Pro Wrestling Illustrated. She retired from in-ring action in 2015, leaving behind a legacy that won't soon be forgotten. So. What's the deal with this wardrobe malfunction we mentioned? On an episode of SmackDown in 2013, AJ Lee teamed up with Dolph Ziggler to take on Natalia and the Great Kali. During the match, her crop top rode up just as she licked the back of her hand, flashing her bra to all those watching. She ended up adeptly handling the situation when it seemed like both the referee and Ziggler told her about the wardrobe malfunction. She dealt with the situation brilliantly, first by pretending to be a cat, and later tweeting how people should tune into SmackDown that week to see said wardrobe malfunction. She owned what most people would have seen as an embarrassing moment before it could get out of hand. Well, that's one way to do it. Unfortunately, there was no way for Eva Marie to deal with this situation, as it literally resulted in the end of a match. Eva's career dates back to 2013, when she signed a contract with WWE and kicked off her training at the WWE Performance Center in sunny Orlando, Florida. Fast forward to July of that year, and she's already making waves on the main roster, stepping into the role of manager for the Bella Twins. Not stopping there, she also became a fixture on WWE's reality TV show, Total Divas, joining the main cast. Around mid-2015, she dipped her toes into the wrestling scene on WWE's developmental brand, NXT. Then, in April 2016, Marie returned to the main roster, officially joining the SmackDown brand in July 2016. In 2017, Marie said goodbye to WWE, but that wasn't the end of her story. She stepped into the world of film with her debut in Inconceivable that same year, then, she kept busy with TV appearances, launched a fitness program, and even stepped into the fashion world with her NEM brand. Fast forward to late 2020, and she's back in the WWE, signing a new contract. June 2021 rolls around, and she's back on Raw, ready to make waves. But just as things seem to be heating up, November brought some unexpected news. She was let go in a mass layoff, mirroring her previous exit from the company as she decided to focus on her acting career once more. Possibly one of the most cringeworthy moments of her career was a wardrobe malfunction she suffered on an episode of The Blue Brand. Eva was supposed to fight Becky Lynch in a singles match, but then disaster struck. Her top broke and she tagged out of the match. She stood on the apron and tried to zip it back, but she couldn't get it. As a result, the referee covered Eva Marie with a white towel, and he also announced that the match wouldn't take place. With the announcement, poor Becky Lynch was left fuming. Lastly, we've got Daniel Bryan, whose ballsy approach left him a little embarrassed at Elimination Chamber. Daniel Bryan won the hearts of the WWE Universe with his bravery in battling the authority, but the five-time world champion suffered an unfortunate wardrobe malfunction in front of thousands watching the pay-per-view extravaganza. Brian was to face off against Drew Gulak at Philadelphia's Wells Fargo Center, but he ended up showcasing more than just his wrestling skills. Like a lot of wrestlers, Brian chose to wear minimal clothing, sporting only trunks and boots in the ring. However, his choice of attire proved to be problematic as, um, his private parts made a few unexpected appearances. It wasn't just a one-time slip-up either. 
Brian's skimpy trunks seemed ill-suited for the occasion, leading to multiple instances where his, ahem, bits were exposed to eagle-eyed viewers. It seemed like Gulak was pulling on Brian's trunks a little too tight, causing them to ride up higher than usual. But the most cringe-worthy moment had to be when Brian was suplexed from the top rope, with one of his nuts making an unexpected appearance as he was flung upside down through the air. Despite the embarrassing incidents, Brian managed to win the match. Which of these do you find the craziest? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. And before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.